my. The beautiful badlands of North Dakota, where the romance of my life began. When it was the Wild West, of the Indian, of the buffalo hunter, the soldier and the cow puncher, where I could ride for days and not see another soul. And today, Medora, gateway to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. How I like the sound of that. Bowie. My name's Joe Wiegand. I'm a Theodore Roosevelt repriser. Every year, Theodore Roosevelt's from throughout the United States gather for a weekend in the Badlands of North Dakota. But if you're pretending to be Teddy Roosevelt and doing so as a serious actor or uh, the mascot of the local Roosevelt High School or Roosevelt College, you, you ought to visit Theodore Roosevelt National Park and walk the bottomlands of his uh, Elkhorn Ranch and, and read a little bit from his chapter in Cowboy Land and his autobiography uh, as you do so. You ought to get the little Missouri in your veins and take that back to your home community. I found maybe 50 or 60 men that are doing Theodore Roosevelt on one level or another, and I feel I have a responsibility to make sure that the other men who are doing this around the country, that they understand that we're not competition, we're colleagues. And can you imagine such a thing? There are actually gentlemen around the country who pretend to be me. Iron sharpens iron. Big thing. Uh, Marty Jonasson has for uh, two years taught a wonderful uh, acting like Theodore Roosevelt workshop, informed by his professional experience as a theater director and also by the fact that 53 years ago he was the last Theodore Roosevelt to portray a young TR in Old Four Eyes. These are novices that are historians, they don't have a lot of theatrical background. And able to do the message, and able to say what you want to say, you've got to have some technique behind you. And the rat! <laughs> right, let's see what you, just embellish me. Improvise. Okay, here we go, again. I think with portraying the Roosevelts, they are characters that represent ideas and ideals that I believe are wonderful to be able to share, and we have that responsibility to share it accurately and honestly. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> if we can take the message of TR and infuse people to think of a good society, a tenacious way to get things done, and to enjoy life, then we've done our job. I really do feel like I'm doing important work. I perform for people who need the encouragement and the inspiration and the humor that Theodore Roosevelt and my interpretation of him gives in a particular performance. Life's hard, and I hope that uh, maybe the message that I'm giving and the performance that I'm giving is making people feel a little bit better about what they've got to face in this life. Lyle, Sam, you've got a, a full wagon load today. Oh, yeah. All right, but Sam, be careful in that cross-town traffic. Oh, wow. It's so hard to get through to you. Oh, yeah. We exchanged Jimi Hendrix lyrics. I don't think that I'm, I'm uh, losing out on my life or missing living my life because I'm living Teddy's because, because I'm so far from living Teddy's. How about that? <laughs> when boy meets girl, here's what they say. When the moon hits your eye like a My pre-show, uh, it gets me into character a bit. It gives me a chance to breathe a little bit. Though, of course, I'll whistle along with Dean Martin, occasionally sing along with Dean Martin. You've had too much wine, that's amore. I like to do a little uh, physical work outside in the sunshine. I love gardening. It's my therapy. Down the street with the clouds at your feet, you're in love. Isn't that beautiful? Bells will ring. Pants. Can't go on stage without pants. Showtime. <laughs> Bully. I don't have a script for my show. Every day is different. The reason I do it the way I do is because I understand 
in order to make historical reenactment enjoyable, it can't just be a lecture, it can't just be history and facts, it's got to be entertaining. Getting your exercise, all the ups and downs, ready? All it, ready. On, one, two. and up, and, and two, and down, and up, and down. That's it, i We'll see you inside. I performed at a rural school in Virginia. One girl ar arrived at the library early, had her hoodie pulled up, and on the back of her hoodie was a, a photograph of a, a birth date and death date of a young African-American man, and, and I asked her I, I, to make conversation. I said, is, is this a recording artist on the back of your shirt? And she looked up at me with the saddest eyes, and she said, no, it's my brother. And uh, I felt horrible. That hour when I performed Theodore Roosevelt's abbreviated life story, I told the story of how a young Teddy lost his wife and mother on the same day, you know, out of the blue, out of two different diseases, and how he came back from that. And uh, I know that she and I locked eyes in the telling of that part of the story. I came back a year later, and she was dressed in a professional business suit with a professional haircut, and she was the intern for the principal of the high school. And she was beaming. The teacher gave my Teddy some credit for helping to kind of give her a little hope, something to hold on to. She's got to have all the credit for what she's done. The Theodore Roosevelt story is a, a family man's story. And what we've all witnessed with the gathering of TRs and this wonderful sort of a development of a new generation of talent with a, a young Quentin, a young Alice, a young 19-year-old who wants to come out and play young Teddy Roosevelt, Rather than just hearing from Theodore Roosevelt, mm -hmm. to hear from Mrs. Roosevelt, to hear from the children, each one brings their own point of view from an area, and it makes it wonderful for people to experience that. I portray Quentin Roosevelt, who is the uh, youngest of six Roosevelt children. I'm of the appropriate age. With my interest in history, there couldn't be a more fitting character. Some of our activities were roller skating down the long halls sliding down the uh, stairwells on cookie trays, and we would explore the attics, which were home to several White House rats. I uh, memorized the presidents when I was five. He knew all of the presidents, frontwards, backwards. He would have me go to the library. So I would get those big books on Theodore Roosevelt, and I'd have to read them to him. Theodore Roosevelt was my boy or hero. On my wall, since I've been a little, you know, some people put football players, I always had a picture of Theodore Roosevelt. The most important part of history is the personal side of everything. Like, uh, too many people make monuments out of people, and you, you, they, you forget the flesh and blood parts of it. My brother Nathan, he was 14 years old. He, he was a very healthy boy, and at 14, we found out he had a rare childhood cancer, rhabdomyosarcoma, and life changed in our family like somebody just shattered glass. Grief is a very um, troublesome thing and it takes time to get over. Nathan was a, a guiding light for all of us and he would say, there's no place in pity. You'll slip down and you won't get out. You know, I'm always reminded, every time my heart beats, I'm reminded of Nathan. It's just like this morning, I was, it just kind of hit me that Nathan's, Nathan's in his grave. Every year we'd come out to Medora uh, just as a family, because we all loved, all of us loved history. This was the, that, uh, in 2015, that was the, particularly the first uh, trip to Medora where we were without Nathan and so we were all it was a, it was a bit difficult When that family came to Medora to the musical to try to get life back to normal and share a little joy uh, Julia Marple who plays Edith Roosevelt met Austin and said to that young man you remind me of my son Quentin and I had a conversation, maybe a five, ten minute conversation with him. And at the end, he said, how would you like to do Quentin Roosevelt? And I said, I'd think about it, and here I am. Austin, a history major at UND, really no acting experience. And what he's doing on stage is just magical. 
that's what has delighted us yes. so much, to see that he really put the time in that you need to put in to do this, and he's doing it so well. It makes us as proud as real as, parents. Yes, it does. <laughs> How are you, young man? Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you, sir. We had a young lady about second grade age who had seen another performance, and she spoke to me and said, you lost your mother and your wife on the same day. And I said, yes, I did. And she gave me a big hug. And as she left, she went like this. And I leaned down expecting to hear a whisper. She gave me a kiss on the cheek. I know that hug and that kiss on the cheek were not for me. Those were for Theodore Roosevelt. And to be able to stand in his stead and pass that on to him was one of the greatest honors of my life. Joe Wiegand. We saw him on the internet, yes. And saw him at the White House for President George W. Bush. Well, I must say, I like what you've done with the place. He's a rock star. Yes. In our world, he is a rock star. <laughs> he truly is. On October 14th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I was shot in the chest by an assassin. I demanded to go and speak to the auditorium with the bullet in my chest, and I spoke for 80 minutes. When I arrived, they asked me if I could do five minutes. I wound up doing 14 and a half minutes. And right now, the social officer of the White House is wondering if it will take a handgun to get me to stop speaking now. My wife, Jenny, was sitting two rows behind President Bush next to a friend of ours, David Quackenbush. And David saw the president lean over to Mrs. Bush and say, this guy's pretty good. It confirmed that, uh, that what I was doing was maybe gonna uh, give me a chance to be of service and even in places like the White House. So it's just been an adventure. It felt good because we'd slept in a lot of Walmart parking lots across the uh, spring and summer and fall of 2008 and had two unexpected major repairs to the RV that we were driving. There were a lot of tough times that we had as a family on the road there, but. You know, anything worthwhile is, is going to ha have its challenges. And this whole last decade of performing as Theodore Roosevelt has been one crazy idea realized simply by hard work and by good people working together. Yeah, it makes me feel pretty good. I'm doing, I'm doing good work and I love doing what I do. I believe again that the American people are as a whole capable of self-control and of learning by their mistakes. Our opponents pay lip loyalty to this doctrine, but they show their real beliefs by the way in which they champion every device to make the nominal rule of the people a sham. I am not leading this fight as a matter of aesthetic pleasure. I am leading because somebody must lead or else the fight would not be made at all. I prefer to work with moderates, with rational conservatives, provided only that they do in good faith strive forward towards the light. But when they halt and turn their backs to the light, sit with the scorners on the seats of reaction, then I must part company with them. We, the people, cannot turn back. Our aim must be steady, wise progress. 